In this video, I'll show you how I've automated a smart plug to make an old dumb heater smarter. For this, I use a temperature sensor, a door sensor, and of course, the smart plug. Then I've also created a custom card for my dashboard, so I can control the target temperature and manually turn on and off the heater if I want to. As always, you can find the full code to both the automation and the custom card on the Gumroad link in the description. I start by creating a number helper. This will be the target temperature in the room. The number helper could be either slider or input field, but I set the step size to 0.1 because I want to be able to adjust the target temperature in 0.1 degree steps. Then I create a new blank automation. I first add a numeric state trigger. The entity will be the temperature sensor I have in the room. Then under above mode, I set it to look at the value of another entity. And here, I add the number helper I created earlier. Now we need to define an ID for this trigger. Click the three dots and select Edit ID. I name this Temp Target. Then I'll add a new template trigger. I want to create a Jinja template that evaluates to true if the room temperature is one degree lower than the target temperature. So let's add the curly brackets to start the Jinja code. Inside I first add the state of the temperature sensor as a float. Then I'll add a less than sign and an equal sign. After that, I'll add the state of the target temperature, the number helper we created, and add minus one at the end. I set four to one minute, so that it has to be true for one minute before triggering the automation. Then I set the ID to temp trigger. And you can see if we bring this code into DevTools, we can test it. And it currently evaluates to false, so it wouldn't trigger the automation. If I just play around with the numbers, you can see that it eventually would change to true. I'll add more triggers later, but let's start adding some actions. First add a choose action. And in the first option, let's add a triggered by condition and select temp target. Then I'll add a device action. Set the device to be my smart plug and have it turn off. So now the heater will turn off if the room temperature goes above the temperature target that is controlled by the number helper. Let's duplicate the first option and basically do the opposite. Set the triggered by condition to temp target and have the device turn on. It's a good idea to rename these options so that you understand what's going on if you come back to this automation in the future. We have a working automation now, but we can make it even smarter with a few more conditions and triggers. First, I would like the heater to turn on only if someone is home. We track our phones using the companion app so the home zone state can tell us how many people are home. So let's add this as a condition to the second option so that the heater only turns on if someone is home. I also only want the heater to turn on between 7 in the morning and 9 in the evening. No need to heat up the room when we are sleeping. So let's also add this time schedule as triggers for the automation. I'm going to create two time triggers, one at 7 in the morning and one at 9 in the evening. Make sure to add trigger IDs to both triggers. I use time on and time off. We could then add the time off trigger to the first option so that the smart plug turns off at 9 or when it reaches the target temperature. I'm then going to add a third option. This will be similar to the second one, but it will be triggered by the time on trigger. Same as before, I want to check that someone is at home. So I'm just duplicating from the second option and moving the condition down to the third. I also want to check that the temperature is below my target temperature. So I add a numeric state condition, set my temperature sensor as the entity. In the below mode, I set it to look at another entity, and I add my number helper. So let's keep going. I'm going to add two device triggers. I set both to be my door contact sensor. One of the triggers will trigger when the door opens for 10 seconds, and the other will trigger when the door closes. Again, I add trigger IDs. Let's use this in the action section. Start by duplicating the third option that turns on the heater and rename it. Set the triggered by condition to door closed. It would be weird if the door closes if no one is home, so let's remove the condition that checks for this. Finally, let's duplicate the first option that turns off the heater. Here we just need to set the triggered by condition to door open. Now that I think about it, you could just add this to the first option instead of creating a new one. And that's my final automation. You could probably make this even smarter if you want. Maybe you have motion or present sensors in the room, or maybe you'd want to turn on the heater if the electricity price is cheaper than usual. Let's now have a look at how we can add this to our dashboard so that we can easily adjust the target temperature of the room. 
we could then also manually override the heater if we just want to quickly heat up the room. Start by adding a custom button card to the dashboard, then add the smart plug as an entity. For the name, I'll use a short code snippet to display both the room name and the state of my temperature sensor. I'll also add a label, for now I just set it to oven. Then I'll add a custom icon, and I set tap action to toggle so that I can turn the smart plug on and off. I'm also going to need a few custom fields. First I'll add a field named target that will display the target temperature. So here I use a little code again to show the state of that number helper from the automation. Then I'm going to use another custom field to add a button inside this button. We can do this if we define the custom field as a card. I will just keep this very bare bones and use as little styling as possible. The important things is the icon and the tap action settings. For this first button, I set the icon to be a minus icon, and I set the tap action to decrease the value of the number helper by 0.1. When done, we can just copy this custom field and paste it again. We just need to rename the field to BTN+, change the icon, and set the tap action to increment the helper. It currently looks awful, but we have all the needed elements. Let's just fix the layout and change some of the font sizes. The grid is important here, so we need to define the grid template areas properly. I create a 3x3 grid. The first row will have label label and icon. In the custom button card world, these are just called L and I. It means the label will span two columns, and the icon will be placed next to it in the third column. The second row will only be the name, so let's add N three times. Then in the third row I add the three custom fields that we created. And you can sort of see that the layout pops into place. Then I can adjust the sizes of each grid cell. I want the left and right column to be 80 pixels so that the buttons are the same size on either side. I also want this button row to be as small as possible. From here on I just do basic styling to the card and font sizes. I set padding for the card itself to zero and I set the height to be 180 pixels. I set name and label to be justify self start. This moves the content to the left of its grid cell. I give the IMG cell a slight background. I have a variable in my theme for this color, but you can use any hex value. I also make the background round by adding border radius. For that to work, I need to add a width and height as well as some padding. Lastly, I add some small margin at the top and right to move it away from the edge. It also needs justify self end and align self start for it to be pixel perfect. Then I copy the width and height onto the icon as well. And I make the icon white by using another one of my color variables. Then I start playing around with the font sizes and padding for the name and label. I want to keep the font sizes of all the cards I design the same, so I just follow my usual rules. Small text is 14 pixels, and big text is 40 pixels. Since the card padding is set to zero so that the icon can be all the way up in the corner, I have to add padding to the text elements instead. When I'm happy with this, I just copy the big text styling onto the number helper number between the two buttons. I keep naming this wrong. It's called target, not state. I set justify self to center instead, and I can remove the padding. Then I just play around a bit with the card height, padding, and grid sizing until I get it the way I would like. Finally, I would like to add some special styling if the smart plug is turned on either by the automation or manually by clicking the card. To do this, we can add a state rule for when the entity is on. You can do whatever you want here, but I just changed the background color of the card to a gradient that I have set up in my theme file. If you want to create your own gradient, you can use a website called cssgradient.io and just copy the code it gives you. Or you could just use a solid color if you want. As you can see, the text is a bit hard to read when it's on, so I just changed the color of all the elements to a black color. One slightly annoying thing here is that we can't change the plus and minus colors from here. This is because the buttons are sort of their own separate buttons, so we will need to add this state styling to those two buttons as well. And that's it. The dashboard card and the automation is done. Let me know what you think about this, and do you have any ideas about how we can make this even smarter? As always, thanks for all the kind words, and let me know if you have any questions. Consider becoming a channel member as well, if you want to join the Discord server. Thanks for watching, until next time.